My name's Sue, and I'd like to congratulate you on becoming the owner of a Suzuki Omnicord. In preparing this tape, I've assumed that you're a complete beginner and that you've never played a musical instrument before, but you'll be amazed how easy it is to play Omnicord. We'll be using the Omnicord song sheet, and we'll start right from the beginning. We'll work through the controls so that you're familiar with the instrument, and then we'll work step by step through the songs. I'll be giving you some examples to listen to and play along with. Don't forget that we'll be working at your own pace. If you want me to repeat some of the information, or you'd like to hear an example again, just rewind the cassette and play back the part that you wanted to hear. You can do this as many times as you like. I know you're going to enjoy playing your Omnicord, so let's get the instrument set up and ready to play. You'll either find your Omnicord packed in a protective polystyrene box or in a carrying case. You should also find a Suzuki book of operating instructions, a cleaning cloth for the touch plate, and your Omnicord song sheet. To follow this instruction tape, you'll need to be able to read your Omnicord song sheet, play your Omnicord, and be within easy reach of your cassette player so that you can stop the tape or rewind and play back as necessary. This is probably most easily done sitting at a table with your Omnicord cassette player and song sheet in front of you, or you may prefer to rest your Omnicord on your lap. It really depends on which is most comfortable. Don't forget that if you're going to use mains power for your Omnicord, you'll need to be near a double power point. If you prefer to use batteries for your Omnicord, you'll need eight batteries. They may be called R14, Size C, HB11 or SUMZ, depending on which brand you buy. Look at the back of your Omnicord and you'll see the battery compartment, which is secured by a screw. This can be opened with a coin. There's a raised diagram on the compartment cover showing how the batteries should be arranged. Insert the batteries, replace the cover and tighten the screw again, making sure that the cover is secured firmly. Turn your Omnicord over and you are now ready to start. If you intend to use mains power, you'll need a 12 volts DC adapter which is available from your local Omnicord stockist. If you intend to do most of your playing using mains power, it's advisable to remove any batteries from your instrument in case they leak and you damage your Omnicord. Look on the left of your instrument and you'll see a round master volume control and a red button marked power. The socket for the adapter can be found on the side of your Omnicord directly under the power button. It's marked DC12V. Plug your adapter into the Omnicord and the three pin plug end into your mains power point and you're now ready to start. Your Omnicord is divided into four main sections. On the left hand side you have the controls which alter the sounds produced by the instrument. In the middle section you have the chord buttons which you use to follow the music. On the right hand side you have the touch plate or harp section. This is the gold coloured plate which has a metallic strip on it. You can strum the touch plate or harp to fit in with the song that you are playing. To the right of the touch plate there's a speaker. Let's look at the chord section of the Omnicord, which you'll find in the middle of the instrument. You'll see three lines of white buttons. Above the top line of buttons you'll see the letter names of the chords. Starting at the left they read E flat, B flat, F, C, G, D, A, E and B. The flat sign is shown as a small letter B. On the left of the chord bank you will see that each line of chords has been marked with the word major, minor or seventh. So to play a G major chord you'd press the G button in the top line. To play a G minor chord you'd press the G button in the middle line and to play a G seventh chord you'd press the G in the bottom line. Each chord gives a different sound, and when you play a song with Omnicord, you use the chords to make an accompaniment for the tune you're playing. We'll deal with the chord section in more detail when we come to play a tune. Let's look at the touch plate next. The touch plate, or harp, is touch sensitive, and you use it to strum in time with the song you're playing. It's very much like strumming a guitar, but much easier as it's impossible to make a mistake. For instance, if you press an F chord, the sound when you strummed the touch plate would be automatically programmed to fit perfectly with the chord. Occasionally, 
the touch plate will get greasy or too moist. It can be cleaned with a cloth that comes with the instrument following the instructions on the packet. Just to the right of the touch plate is a very much smaller metallic strip. This is also touch sensitive and can be used as an instant stop without turning the power off. Let's move to the left hand side of your instrument now and go through the controls. At the bottom of this section you'll find a red power on off button. Pressing this button turns on the power and a red display light will appear. To the right of the power button is the master volume control. Each sound produced on the Omnicord has its own volume control so that you can get the blend of sounds to your own liking. The master volume controls the whole instrument. Above the power and master volume controls is a section that deals with rhythm. There are six different rhythms to choose from, rock, waltz, slow rock, latin, foxtrot and swing. You can experiment with different rhythmic combinations by pressing two buttons down at the same time. The rhythm volume control sets the volume level of the drum sound. If you wanted to cut out the rhythm completely, you would just turn the rhythm volume control as far to the left as it will go. The rhythm tempo control is used to set the speed of your rhythm. To speed up your rhythm, turn the control to the right, and to slow down, turn the control to the left. Listen to the example. I'm pressing the rock rhythm, speeding it up and slowing it down using the rhythm tempo control. Now I'm combining rock with foxtrot and altering the rhythm volume. The yellow synchro start or rhythm start button can be pressed to start the drum sound on its own and it also controls the instant stop control next to the touch plate. If the synchro start button is pressed down, touching the instant stop control will stop everything except the drums. This gives you a drum solo. If you want the instant stop control to stop everything playing, make sure that the synchro start button is in the up position. Above the rhythm section, you'll find the controls for the chord section and for the harp. The yellow memory button holds the chord that you've pressed and keeps it playing until you press a different chord. For most of the songs that you play, the memory button should be pressed in. This means that when you're changing the chords, you don't have to keep your finger on the chord button all the time, but you can take your finger off the chord and it will keep playing, giving you time to find the next chord to be played. Here's an example. I'm changing between C, F and G 7th chords. With the memory button up, it will only play while I hold down the chord. With the memory button down, it will continue playing until I change the chord. <laughs> 